Hey everybody, hope your summer is going well. We're back for another episode of If I Were, and we're gonna pick out, guess again, another card of If I Were. Let's see here, card here. Uh, I'm gonna put that back. This is this is very similar to episode six. <laughs> we're gonna keep this, but it's very, very it's similar to the side hustle there, yeah. Um, Alright, this is a career job. If I were in between jobs. I've gotten this uh, quite a bit since living here in DC and doing the work I do with the niche movement and the career work, especially the events that I do. I meet a lot of young professionals that move here to DC because maybe their partner moved here and they are now, they follow their partner here and now they're in the middle of jobs and they're job searching. I've met some people that said, hey, I'm going back to school, but I also need to find a job. And just other people that have come here to take a job, but they're really, they're, it's not the, the job that they're willing to, that they want to be in. Long story short is, if you're in between jobs, here are a couple things that I have recommended and things that I have even done myself. First thing that you want to do, obviously, here a lot of people say like the resume gap. You don't you don't want to go, you know, one month, six months, a year, two years without actually working somewhere. So first thing that I would say is volunteer. There are there is something in your community, your city, your state that you can do to volunteer. Uh, the best way that you can just at least stay active is by going out and helping your community. That could be in a food bank, it could be in uh, an animal shelter, whatever it might be. But the next thing you want to do is when you actually volunteer is to put that on your resume. Uh, whether you're volunteering five hours in the weekend or you're literally working there 30, 40 hours a week, you got to figure out what are those two to three or four bullet points that you can put on your resume. Maybe you helped out uh, fundraise a charity event for this organization. Put that on there. Uh, the next thing is I, I've, I've always said this for myself, being an entrepreneur, work for myself for the last three years, is it's easier to steer a boat when the boat is moving versus when it's staying still. You can't, you can't steer a ship or a boat when it's not moving. And so for me, it's getting up every day at 9 a.m., figuring out a way to get out of the house and going to somewhere. So even as you going out and getting, uh, going to your local coffee shop, and then you know making sure you apply to six jobs, 10 jobs, write cover letters, go to a networking event, whatever it might be. Don't remain stagnant. Uh, and the third thing that I would do is, this is a great time for you to add a new skill set to your resume or to your professional portfolio. So between resources that we've talked on other episodes or you, uh, you might have heard me talk about in person, you can literally take free classes on Creative Live. You can go on YouTube and Google search and literally find a new skill set that you want to learn, photography, video editing, you know, learning a second second language. My wife, in fact, is learning a second language right now. Uh, she's learning French by a free app on her phone every day. So there's a way that you can learn a new skill set. I can really add that to your professional resume and your skill set by not sitting still and figuring out a way that you can add a new skill set. Because if you go for that new job, you say, well, here's what I did for the last six months. I volunteered. I went out to a networking event every single night, and I met these people, and I became part of this organization and I took a class on Creative Live or General Assembly or 1776, whatever it might be. Those would be three different things that I would do if you are in between jobs. And uh, obviously, if you do go to these networking events, the other thing that I highly recommend if you are between jobs or job searching, is find out who the event organizer is, email them and say, hey, I'm coming to your event next Wednesday. How can I help? That's it. What always winds up happening. I hear uh, stories come back my way. And, hey, I did that, Kevin, and all of a sudden, I was running the registration table and I got to meet all 30 guests that came through and I got five business cards. Or you say, hey, how can I help with it? And they say, hey, can you bring your phone? Can you Instagram live? Or can you write a blog post about it? And all of a sudden now your blog post has gotten featured on LinkedIn or something. So those simple things that if you're going through an event, how can I help, might open a lot of doors for you. I hope that helps. I know a lot of people are in career transitions, might be between, between jobs, but like I said, maybe episode you might move to a new city uh, to support your spouse or your partner and now you're with some jobs with further things that I would do if I could ever help do something else. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time on If I Were. Alright wait again I know I did this in episode five but as we turn the cameras off there's at least 
here are the practical things that I would recommend if you are in between jobs. The first one is you can't picture, uh, we, we live in the whole nine to five mentality, right? It's now the boutique career mentality, the gig economy. You can literally make a living uh, or a wage, maybe more than just one job out of three or four jobs. Uh, I make a living out of about five or six or sometimes seven different revenue streams depending on the month and the projects I'm working on. So think of it that way that you may not need a full-time job. You could get away by freelancing on Upwork, Elance, uh, creating a portfolio on Thumbtack, whatever it might be. You might have a skill set where you can make an income that way. Uh, we don't need a full-time job. And the second bonus piece of content I want to share is, let's say you go that route where you are a freelancer or maybe you work for yourself for three, six months, maybe a year, two years. A lot of what I've been uh, reading about is you have half the recruiting population that frowns upon hiring entrepreneurs, people that have worked for themselves for a number of years. You have another half that say, hey, we love that entrepreneurial spirit, right? So a good way that I've read to position yourself is if you have worked for yourself at any period of time, is instead of saying that you're self-employed, you want to maybe put um, freelancer, but maybe you put creative director, or you put copywriter, whatever it might be, almost like if you were not working for an actual company. And then you want to say things like, um, I managed my company to do X, Y, or Z, or I secured $100,000 in revenue in six months, whatever it might be, or I balanced multiple clients, or I serviced multiple clients X, Y, and Z by doing copywriting, blogging, etc. Uh, but you want to use words like manage, you know, talk about the different money that you might put in and objects and clients that you've served if, if you're in that capacity. But uh, you never want to come from you just work for yourself as self-employed because again, the population doesn't want to hire entrepreneurs. They might think like you can't work for anybody else or you can't be led or managed. Uh, so that's one other little tip if you can go the self-employed route and you're still looking for a full-time job. That's how I would position myself. So I got, take care guys.